welcome back to Max Plane Dawn of War Unification. Today I have another faction guide for you, this time it's for the World Eaters, the Cornate Marines, the Marines dedicated to the God of Blood and Slaughter and Killing and Skulls and whatnot. So they are very <laughs> angry in the sense and uh, yeah, like, like killing quite a lot. Um, the faction itself is very special in many things. The economy is very special, the, they have a special resource, the units increase in cost sometimes and they have quite a lot of units available to them. Um, this is also because they have special uh, unit caps, so it's a lot of special things we will cover today, so stay tuned. As usual we will jump into the replay, a replay I say, the safe game to see everything. And here we are in the safe game where we talk about all the units and stuff, but before we will talk about this very special <laughs> thing on top here. Everything about this is special. You have requisition power that is not very special, but uh, let's talk about requisition first. Requisition you get by capturing points and building listing posts. These are the altars of corn. Uh, this has decayed a bit. They give you the standard plus 12, but you cannot upgrade the listing post. So you are stuck at the plus 12 and are reliant on other means to increase your income. Um, your HQ gives you resources and yeah, for power you can build your standard generators and the thermoplasma generator if you have it on the map. And you get also um, special ways to increase these. Um, you have economy upgrades, you have two. Um, both of which increase the income of both uh, requisition and power and you have the special economy boost that is for almost every unit if it is in melee for the time it is in melee you get a temporary economy boost um, you will see now an overview I have put together where you can see the various boosts for requisition and power for various units um, these percentages shown are m multipliers so Let's say um, you have one commander in, in combat. You get a boost of 35%, like a multiplier of 1.35. But if you have two commanders in melee combat, it's not uh, plus 70%, it is 1.35 times 1.35 is uh, equals 1.82. So it's 82% increase. So it's more than the sum, you could say. And the more units you have in combat, the more it stacks, it stacks, it stacks, it stacks. So this is the reason why um, sometimes the economy for uh, World Eaters explode because there are certain units that give you quite a lot of income when they are in melee. If we look over the overview here, you see that our general high values are for the commanders with the 35%, it's um, the second highest number you could say. And then you have the relic commanders, The Demon Prince and the Primarch and the tier 2 Titans all give you plus 100%. They, if one of these units is in combat, you double your income of requisition and power. But if two of these units are in combat, you not double it, you quadruple it. 400, 300% uh, equals like the income is times 4. You see these values are generally way too high. You can also see that the, the like plus 5% is more or less the standard. You can see all the marines except for some berserkers which get plus 10 for some reason um, if, is the standard norm, the plus 5. Um, similar to the demons you get plus 5 for um, power and yeah vehicles get plus 10 but just one, one second to think about it. Uh, a hellfire dreadnought costs you or a dreadnought costs you like 100 requisition, 200 power or something and two marines or let's say two blood letters uh, each give you more because it's not the sum it is 1.05 times 1.05 it's uh, a little more than 10 percent you see that two marines or two blood letters give you more economy than uh, than a very expensive vehicle is something that i do not like i have um, a suggestion to basically change most of the values you can see here but for the current version this is what you get uh, noteworthy is that the blood pack troopers and blood pack warriors only give you plus 0.1 percent this is um, one reason why the uh, um, cultist spam does not work anymore yeah um, the blood crusher for example if you look at the credit demons has sadly a little low number but yeah um, high income you get for commanders so uh, having one better two commanders early on or like at least a tier two 
and fight with them is a must have to get some insane economy. Not saying that their economy is bad with their standard economy incomes, especially the requisition bonus of plus 25% for the first upgrade is uh, way higher than normal. N normal uh, economy upgrades for requisition only gives you 15%, but then these factions can also upgrade their listing post, so it's kind of uh, warranted um, to be that way. Okay, now um, back to the um, safe game here. We now see at the bottom also their third resource, the blood points. Uh, blood tribute is used for several abilities, global abilities, abilities of units, sometimes even uh, for the production of certain um, units like late game units. If we if we look over here at your two titans cost 25 for example and the tier uh, two titan cost 50. Also Angron for example cost 25 because he's more or less <laughs> tier a tier uh, one titan in the strength and yeah points uh, the blood points how do you get them if a unit dies one of your units one of the opponents units it doesn't matter if a unit dies you get i don't know if it's like per model one blood point or if it's less but at least if units dying on the field you get blood points and can use it so it's more or less a passive you get um you passive income you could say as long as you fight and units die uh, you get blood points um so the abilities tend to be uh, or were really strong in the previous version they have been turned down but we will talk about abilities as we uh, go further in this guide video the ne next special things is the units cap as well we have army cap and we have commander cap the army cap is basically every unit costs you army cap if you look for example um, marines they cost 20 armor cap or 30 or 25 or 40 so these are your army cap it, if, if it's not like the um, Impossible battles here. It um, starts with 100 and goes up to 400. So these values seem big, but um, you can think of it like if you divide it by 10, you start off with uh, 10 army cap, which is standard kind of. For if you uh, think about squad cap, starts with 10, and you end up with 40, which is which is like the 2020. You could think the sum of both. So it's not as big you don't get more units you don't get less units but what it allows you is that you if you want an army full of marines or an army full of vehicles you can do so so that's uh, a way you can let's say build your army very much uh, as you like you could say um, the way to increase them is also interesting you can um, uh, every production building like your barracks your demon portal, um, your vehicle building, but also your uh, later um, titan and relic unit buildings all give you plus, I have it here, plus 20, uh, plus 20 um, pop cap. Every um, building, uh, the first three buildings like here have these pop cap upgra uh, upgrades. They are six upgrades, each increasing it plus 50. So you only with upgrades, you can also reach the 400 and um, lastly, you get a plus five for a lot of squad leaders as well. So many ways to increase the squad cap. Interesting is uh, that if you're, for example, building a vehicle building in a tier two and want to build vehicles and notice, ah, crap, my army cap is too low. Normally you would need to increase it from like the, even the uh, vehicle building sometimes delaying your vehicles, but you can, um, uh, you have access to the army cap increase in every, uh, like in the barracks the demon gate and the blood mechanicum so if you build a unit here and you notice you do not have enough cap go to the demon gate where you're probably not producing at the moment and get the army cap there so you can get the army cap and produce unit at the same time which is nice um, and the, the second cap you hear the commander cap is uh, it starts with 10 and every commander you build costs you five uh, commander cap so you can build up to two commanders in the early game um, but there is upgrades like the command upgrades, which I have already researched here. There are two and each upgrade increases the commander cap by plus five. So for each of these upgrades, you not only make your commander stronger, you can build more commanders up to four in a normal game with standard caps. Yes, this is all about the resources and units caps. And before we jump into the uh, overview of the buildings we will talk about the global abilities because put every special thing you can have in one faction why not uh, world eaters have uh, global abilities they can be accessed either by clicking here or clicking the will of corn and be aware he talks quite a lot corn
So he, he's a quite the chatty guy. Um, it's actually a unit that is somewhat on the field. You, you can move it around. So it is the problem with that is that if you want to select workers, for example, you track like workers here, you sometimes uh, uh, get him in the group uh, accidentally and do not uh, get the workers because army, if you make like an, an uh, call, like, like a, a box, you select army uh, as a priority and uh, do not select workers, which is nice in the most part, but for world eaters it sometimes can backfire if you select a corn dude. Um, but you have like six abilities. Um, two abilities are available in tier one, two abilities in tier three, and the last two abilities in tier two. The first ability is the Infernal Contempt, costing you 16 blood points. Um, deactivate um, um, abilities from uh, enemies in a certain area but and grants your units in this area uh, keen sight. They get like the sparking abilities. It's uh, similar to let's say um, the keen sight ability from Dark Elder where you get a squad keen sight. So this is an area you get uh, these units have squad. So if they move the detection moves with them. It's not like an uh, Imperial Guard scan for example. Then you have the insatiable bloodlust 20 uh, blood points increases the attack speed of target corn infantry or demons. So uh, this should also um, be true for ranged attacks. So if you have a high damage um, ranged attacker or melee attacker, which is in melee, you can use this to uh, make him, him stronger. So it's only uh, select one uh, squad ability. So they now attack faster. Then in tier two, you have access to the unstoppable ferocity makes uh, a squad temporarily invulnerable. Um, I'm not sure if it's like clean invulnerability like the IG priest or if it's like I cannot die invulnerability. I hope the first one costs you 30 blood points and uh, I, I don't forgot the duration but uh, one squad gets unkillable and also glowing a little red at the beginning. And the other tier two ability is the blood rain. The, the thing that uh, probably most of you have seen in replay or so is an area of effect where blood rains down, it increases the damage um, of all units inside, um, friend and foe. So <laughs> best used if you have like uh, um, rain titan covers the battlefield, allowing to blah, blah, blah. provides an attack bon damage bonus in an area. Um, so best used if if you like uh, have ranged units standing inside, or if you have melee units and the enemy is running away or something. So you can use it. It states also that it detect infiltrated units. Um, so this is like a scan then and then the tier 3 abilities are one apocalyptic fury increases defense against range detect and and Morris moves faster so one squad um, Interesting also it's not my units they move faster and uh, it, uh, Take less damage the damage reduction is like 75% so it's like almost no damage from range attacks Which is nice and the last one is the most infamous um, under players the corns rage it was in the previous version, map-wide confusion, you could say. Uh, the enemy infantry begins to fight with each other. Jesus. So they become, uh, um, how should I say, confused. I, I tell it for the most time where they fight uh, each other in, in this term, but now it only affects a certain area. Um, I cannot show it here because these are my units, but in this area, the units would fight uh, at, each, uh, at each with each other, you could say, for a certain amount of time. So this is the global abilities. We'll now jump uh, over to the building overview. The buildings we have all here. You have your HQ where you can build your builders depending on your specialization. You can build, uh, have a specialization, demonology or uh, technomancy. If you have technomancy, you get a technomancer. If you, s you start with um, demon host and uh, also if you get demon demonology, you stick with demon host. You get your capo units in form of your cultists. Later on, your death brigade is a tier two cultist squad, and you get your first five command, first five commanders here, your tier one commanders. And uh, if you choose one of the specialization, you get one special commander each. And this upgrade, don't uh, mix it up. It's tier three, not tier two. The cost is like a tier two upgrade, which is something I uh, will suggest to increase. Your tier, actually, tier two is uh, your armory. But uh, before we jump over to that, we will look through the unit production. Uh, buildings you have your massacre chambers, which is more or less your barracks Interesting about your barracks because you have so many different squads in the barracks a little too much You have add-ons you have like the uh, storm chambers, which is like uh, for your jump squads like you have uh, Raptors you have assault 
um, chosen and warp talents and you can have your devastator chambers which give you access to teeth of corn uh, destroyer chosen and cornite havocs the second production building in tier 1 is the demon gate where you can get various demons in tier 1 it's flesh hounds and blood littles your tier 2 as i said is your blood apothecarion uh, limited to one and you have all the researches you have your commander upgrades your bionics your ranged attack your melee attack your demons a speed boost and all, all you can think of you have it here and then later on you can build your blood mechanicum give, which gives you access to all your vehicles which are non-titan vehicles and in tier three and uh, mostly tier four you get access to the uh, great gate where you can get the demon prince your relic units which are your bloodthirster ski tank and doom blaster your tier one titan units which we have here and your tier two titan unit in form of the bane lord titan a new to this version is the great portal of champions where you can build various uh relic commanders legendary commanders you could say you have sulfur you have khan um one that i cannot is not shown here you get um uh what is it called again her her name um i forgot Saren. how can i forget uh, lotara Saren. um as a more or less hidden uh, Primark Einkron and if you have uh, some special requirements met you can get also a special squad like the Bloody, the Blood Wolf squad, um, Swain Wolfbad and Lord Krull. They um, need special requirements. Uh, the Bloodied are available if you fight or uh, are allied with World Eaters. Swain and his wolves will be available if you fight against or with 13th Company and Krull will be available if you fight with or against Orcs. Um, your economy buildings are your altar of corn. Altar of corn itself, the listing post does not have any um, gun, but you can use the blood pulse for five blood uh, resources. You have this pulse, which deals quite a lot of damage against infantry, uh, especially um, low tier infantry will uh, more or less deal with, with uh, will die. For example, if you have like um, guardsmen, but uh, higher tier infantry will have like the he their health halved or something. And yeah, your other um, relic um, uh, um, income building like the thermoplasma, uh, thermoplasma generator and plasma generator are more or less standard. Um, defensive wise, you have a torrental turret, but only if you got uh, for technomancy, so you can build that then. And this can be upgraded uh, with missiles as well. And you have access to the razor wire. Um, this is an building you can get in both specializations one last thing about the buildings most buildings not all grind an aura for allied units um, very similar to the chaos space marine uh, buildings like the increase the regeneration of the rate and also reduce the morale regeneration of units around so um, and this is all available in tier one uh, for chaos space marines it's only available in tier two onwards i think this is here uh, not the case. It's available in tier one. It's, it states, creates an order that restores the health of units and reduces the morale of enemy units. Like the morale loss is for like Chaos Marines. It's in tier one, and later on in tier two, the aura is the health increasing aura is enabled. I'm not sure if it's the same here or not. Um, this should be it about the building yeah one last thing you can get your tier 4 research in the great gate and the great portal of champions so you can basically pick or choose one of each um, or can build both for example for the primark you need uh, the other building as well okay now the units and there are a lot of units to cover so buckle your pants <laughs> we will jump over here and start with the commander units your or let's say the builder units first the builder units is either a technomancer or a Demon host. Do I have a demon host here? No, I'm not prepared very well. Give me a second. A demon host. Uh, they both grant you passive abilities. Uh, the the Cornet um, Technomancer increases the uh, damage of a squad, and the uh, demon host gives you a. Um, increases squad protection, so it gives you a damage protection, and both give you um, special abilities if they are attached to a squad which I have in my completely um, in my preparation uh, uh, not prepared here but if we quickly go over here and attach them to these berserkers you will see that there is an ability enabled like a blood um, 
blood bolt ability you could call it so they uh, take health from the squad and use it to make a blast blood tribute you can put it here then makes this little blast here and you see it costs you quite a lot of health in the of the squad so it can kill them and this uh, little sparkly things is the damage protection ability now we will more or less quickly hopefully get the uh, Ability, okay, I can tell you, um, it's an ability which increases accuracy and damage of ranged attacks, I think. So very good to have a Technomancer attached to a squad. Very interesting uh, strategi strategies you can de do with that. Other more or less builder units are the Servitors and Support Servitors, which get built from the Bloodsmith, with it, which is a commander if you choose Technomancy. It's the special commanders if you the special commander if you pick Technomancy. And it can let you build servitors, support servitors, and later on a health forge dreadnought in tier four. They start off with two squads in the model, in the, uh, two models in the squad, and he can get a what is it called? A servo harness, which gives him um, access to more weaponry and also increases the uh, amount of special weapons the support servitors, for example, can field. They can repair units. That's why I have them here. They can repair each other, I think, as well. Especially support servitors are. One of the most, um, uh, let's say, the, the more powerful units you could say, as you can get them very early on with heavy bolters and so on and so on and so forth. It's uh, quite expensive, way more expensive than in 5.9.1, but still very good unit to have. Your tier one commanders are, for example, your Cornate Lord. The Cornate Lord is basically your Chaos Lord. You can think of, but the damage of by his default weapon is very low. Uh, is quite a good damage sponge and will fight longer in melee combat, which gives you quite a lot of resources. Um, has like most or like many commanders the blessed by the blood god ability, which gives costs you blood points, but gives him a uh, um, high health reg regeneration for quite some time. Has the demon strength ability similar to the chaos lord in tier three, and he can have a lot of different weapons here, depending on your tech. Uh, you can see it here, and if you demonology, you get also a very special help blade. Um, can have a special set of armor. You get infernal armor, um, a jump pack. Uh, this the infernal armor gives you more health. So the jump pack gives you a jump pack, increases your health, and you can get a terminator armor, which I have here. Um, so the jump pack or the infernal armor do not change the model itself. The terminator armor it does, so it has access to a different weaponry. Um, so quite. Quite a lot of options for your um, Cornate Lord. Most of uh, the stuff is only available in tier 3 and later on, so in the early game you will more or less stick to a standard loadout, which is, isn't the greatest. Um, so the Cornate Lord is most of the time not the not best choice for a tier 1 commander. A way better choice in, as a tier 1 commander is the Blood Pack Command Squad. Um, not because it's like very powerful by itself, it, it um, is a command squad, so you can get blood pack warriors and troopers in tier 1. In tier 2 you can also get some blood packed assassins and bodyguards. Um, the assassin is if you go melee combat, you get uh, you reduce your melee uh, damage taken by 33%. And if you have your bodyguard, uh, it reduces the range damage taken by uh, 25%. So these are more or less um, special if you go melee or ranged. I really, really like the model for the blood packed assassin. Just, just look at her. What a beautiful lady she is. Um, yeah, um, he also gets access to the blessing of the blood god. And what makes him so good is the sacrifice ability, because you can sacrifice a blood pack warrior or trooper for only 13 uh, requisition. It is available in tier one as well, and it's similar, n not totally the same, but similar to the uh, executability of the imperial guard. It gives you morale. Uh, basically fills up the morale of all your units around and gives you morale immunity as well for um, a little bit of time and increases the damage dealt. The damage dealt aspect of it was reduced quite a bit. Um, so it's a, a slow, a little damage boost, but mostly, most importantly, it increases your uh, morale to full. So very good. And the sacrifice ability is also available in some other squads, but the uh, on some different squads, I should say, but then uh, for the most part, the model count, uh, the model cost is higher. Uh, it also has a passive ability that decreases the cost, the, the production cost of um, cultist squad by 25%. The <coughs> reinforcement cost is not affected. Then you have here Galan Surlak, which is more or less a 
um, how should I say, an apothecary or a, um, what is it called again? The chaplain has a um, regeneration aura around him, has also the blessing of the blood god and can produce berserkers. Um, in tier 1 actually. Berserkers normally are tier 2 unit, but he can produce it in tier 1, which uh, increase in price. He has a chance to not produce standard berserkers, but broken berserkers, which are an uh, inferior version, or primaris berserkers, which is a superior version of the berserkers. So, yeah, uh, hope for the primaris berserkers. So he can produce it um, everywhere on the map, so it's quite quite handy to have him. I, I like him. He's one of my favorite commanders. Uh, yeah, one of the also more infamous commanders is the Dark Apostle, which was very infamous in the previous version, is okay-ish now. Um, he can also get now Dark Disciples, which uh, reduces range damage taken from the Dark Apostle, which is really nice, so they are like damage sponges, you could say. And he has a quite a big assortment of uh, abilities. He has a Warp Sight player, which significantly reduces armor of enemy units from ranged attacks, which is interesting, around him, I think, yes, it's uh, directly um, activated, not really sure how this works, but you can see all of his abilities share cooldown, so you cannot activate all, which is good. Then you have the Wraithful Entity, which is also tier 1, which increases the damage the Dark Apostle deals, and the last one in tier 1 is the Benediction of Darkness, which increases the speed and um, um, defense against range attacks, which is really, really good in tier 1. Doesn't cost blood, so you can more or less spam it. And then if you use, uh, get to the command, commander upgrades, you get access of the Litany of Despair, which reduces the movement speed around him and drains morale, which got toned down. It was totally overpowered in the previous version. This time you need a research, so it's tier 2, and uh, it does not drain morale as much. And then the, uh, lastly, in, um, if you get the last command upgrade, you get access to the Soul Terror, Soul Terror Portent. Um, increases the damage of near infantry units, which gives them all damage bonus around, you could say. And lastly, the Dark Player is enabled by Player, whatever, is um, enabled by the Dark Disciples, which increases um, significantly increased ability recovery rate. Um, you can see here, um, but you can he cannot move while this is active. Very versatile commander, you can see here. Very good melee, very durable. Um, doesn't have the healing ability, blessing um, of the blood god, but has other abilities like the benediction of darkness, who um, allows him to stay alive quite well. Um, uh, about the bloodsmith, I talked about another tier one commander is the herald of corn, which is a uh, blood letter. Um, commander, he has detection, um, can teleport if you have um, researched something, I will talk about it later. Um, pretty good in melee and has um, a aura, I think. Increases the squad protection of ranged attacks. It's not the squad, it's actually uh, around him. So you see this, this uh, red circles is an aura of him, so this aura is quite big as well. So on a this this um, red circle around is his aura, so it's quite a lot of uh, range on this um, aura, so very good to have him. Really expensive though. And if you chose Demonology, you get access to the Demonic Lord of Corn, which is similar but not the same. I think he has also detection, no. Um, he's just a really good commander, has access to the Warp Flame Sword ability, which um, looks similar to the ability of the Chaos, the Demon Lord, but it's not, it not, does not knock back, it does um, fire damage over time, and he can produce favored blood letters on the field. So similar to how um, Galen Solak can produce Berserkers, or the Bloodsmith can produce his Servitors, he can produce favored blood letters. The only way to give, get access to favored blood letters for uh, the Cornate Marines here. Um, you may also notice a little aura around here. All commanders, excluding Lothar Sarin, but including the Demon Prince and uh, Ankron, get an aura. It, I think it's damage increasing aura for all commanders. And it interestingly, um, they get a second aura if there are two so commanders um, close. Um, can I show it quickly here? I think I can. We take you and you, for example, and then we will quickly uh, jump in some raptors here. 
<coughs> so we will see when the raptors come in and I go close to them they get uh, these um, damage increasing um, indicators here and if I move the second commander in you will see that the aura uh, even for the commands, commanders will change in, in form so it's uh, probably a second uh, a stacking you could say um, damage increasing aura or whatever so you have if you have two commanders in the vicinity you're, you're the, uh, you get a second aura which is interesting very interesting indeed Let's talk about the relic commanders. Um, you have the first commanders you have access to. Um, here I have Swain. Let's talk about the, your standard commanders first. You have Zul for the Impaler, Butcher of Wax. Uh, unit you have always access to. Um, decreases the morale of nearby units. Pretty good combatant, has Blessing of the Blood God. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Can be attached. A uh, really big Terminator like dude. I will kill him now for a reason I will tell you later. Then we have Khan the Betrayer. Everybody see, uh, seems to love Khan because he's like iconic for World Eaters or something. He has also Blessing for the Blood God. He has Blood for the Blood God, which increases damage uh, dealing by Khan. And you have Maim Kill Burn Battle Cry, which affects nearby units. Uh, so basically, damage increase for units around him. So it's all about the damage. And if you have Khan on the field, you can build Lotara Sarin, his BFF, you could say. She has ranged and melee attack, looks really cool indeed. Has like this cool plasma pistol and whatnot. Has uh, two abilities by herself. It's the orbital leader scan, which makes um, reveals, briefly reveals, but building position remain known. Yeah, basically a complete map scan, which is quite good. Um, also shows stealth units, and you can like, have like orbital bombardment. Um, Another thing she enables you is um, from your blood tower if you have upgraded him to tier 3 he gets this bloody barrage ability which um, yeah does what it says does a bloody barrage I think it's already on the way but we will see it will it's a map wide nuke for quite a lot of resources quite a lot of cooldown boom and killed this fool so <laughs> quite a, the fun uh, ability to have if you ask me um, let's talk also about the other one here, which is Crawl. Crawl is available if you are uh, facing Orcs. He has also some nice abilities. He has Blessing for the Blood God. He also gets the Demon Strength ability. And he can summon a Bloodthirster, because why not? So instead of building it, you can summon it. I think it does cost you still. So, um, do I need? Yes. Um, where's, where's the builder here? I want to show. You need like um, a great gate for it as well. And then you can summon a bloodthirster. Click, poof, and there's a bloodthirster. Really nice. I think it does re cost resources uh, to summon it and you can only have one, of course. And last but not least, there is Swain. We will talk about it here quickly. Now we have Swain here, we have Swain here. Swain, uh, Wolfbat is a, yeah, long bearded, um, 13th company or not 13th company per se what they called again the uh, the wolves the space wolves and he has the blessing of the blood god can teleport has uh, can be attached and has the uh, battle roar which affects nearby infantry and uh, the units are immune to morale damage and receive a damage bonus so it's like um, damage bonus and morale uh, immunity really nice to have okay this should be the commanders I think let me quickly think there are so many commanders I probably have forgot one um, no I don't think so Oof. let's talk about infantry and oh my god is this a lot of infantry um, we will start slow with cultists there are some cultists but we have the blood pack troopers which are your ranged cultists um, they can get access to grenades on their death brigade veteran and the sacrifice ability also with the death brigade veteran which is your tier 2 commander um, in tier 2 you can also get the special weapons, like all weapons are tier 2 only except a uh, few exceptions. You have grenade launchers, you have shotguns, you have heavy stoppers and flamers. The heavy stoppers, as far as I know, do not suppress. It's just a really good range option. And you have the blood pack yeah. warriors, which is your melee variant. Get the same abilities from the death brigade veteran, can get uh, shotguns and flamers. In tier 2 you have this uh, death brigade, you have basically has a full squad of these veterans. 
Um, they have no squad leader per se, but also can use grenades and sacrifice. Sacrifice is not very good because the models cost quite a lot here. Can get grenade launchers and other uh, cool weaponry, including sniper rifles. And now let's talk about marines and there are quite a lot of marines and before we talk about marines themselves we will talk about cost increases of units because you say here uh, space marine unit type increases the cost of subsequent space marine unit class um, all these units here are space marines space marines increase the cost of the next space marines you build by one per model per model why do i say this twice because let's say you see here a big number because i have quite a lot of um, space Marines. You think if I build four more, the, this number will jump. If, if I build a Cornet Marines, it's four Cornet Marines. And you think it would be jumped by four. It does not, because every model increases the cost of every other model. And these have four models. So it's not plus four, it's four times plus four. So it's plus um, 16. You will see here, if I build one, it should jump to uh, 550. Yes. And you might say, oh my god, this is f so much for a Cornet squad. But yeah, I have so many squads on the field. They start with the, with the standard 190 and uh, go off slowly, not uh, in a big part. Why is this, why may this be a good idea to have it? Um, as you see, you have access to quite a lot of units. And in the previous version, it was like if you build Marines, you get a penalty on demons. So you are stuck on one unit time. This time, this uh, encourages you to build different unit types, not make a full marine army. It also works as kind of a anti-snowball. Let me explain you. You're on combat. You're on melee combat. You're winning. You're killing a lot of units. You don't lose a lot of units. You get a hell of a lot of economy. Um, so getting even more units out will cost you more. So it, it the more you win, the more, less you lose, the more you need to, uh, um, how should I say, invest to get more ahead, you could say. Because the world eaters are very snowball affection because of the melee economies because if you're winning fights you, you get a lot of uh, resources but it was also the other way around you you lose a fight you don't get a lot of resources you need to spend a lot of resources to uh, reinforce uh, you lose a squad or two the, uh, the replacement squads then get cheaper now you can replace squads for the normal rate instead for the higher rate so you can kind of bounce back and come back previous and or, uh, so you do not lose uh, immediately you could say um Yes, this is what I wanted to talk. There was there even more. I think there was one thing more I wanted to point out, but uh, we will talk about it in a second. So this is only for squads on the field, like the Raptors. If I build Raptors, they cost uh, this amount. If they are in base, it does not increase their cost, but if they are on the field, it increases. You will see as soon as they hit here, the cost increases. So the cost increases only through the units on the field. This is uh, engine based. Um, all the different um, leaders do not count to it, it's only base models. One thing that does not increase, because I don't think it's possible in the engine, is the reinforcement cost. So the idea is to build all the squads you want for a certain game state, like in T1 you want to have like three Cornet Marine squads, you build them and then you start to reinforce. Because every reinforced model does count in the increase um, cost for the next squad. So build your squads first, reinforce later, which is something you would normally want to do anyway. Okay, a lot of pre-talk for these Marines. Let's talk about the actual squads. You have like your Cornet Marines here, uh, tier one ranged uh, option, not very special in that sense, can get frag grenades in tier one, and later they get access for their various leaders, they get access to crack grenades or melter bombs. The leaders are your aspiring champion, which gives you access to the crack grenade. The skull champion in tier three gives you access to the melter bombs. You need to research it anyway. And you can get an icon bearer, but you can only get two maximum. And the icon bearer is like an apothecary, it increases the regeneration of the squad. In tier three, the tier three commander, the skull gem, gives you access to the berserk fury ability. Um, and you can sacrifice in tier one already, but the reinforcement cost of 65 requisition for one model never ever used the sacrifice ability on the squad here. It's too expensive. Can get some special weapons in tier two. The two more. Units you can have access in tier one are your teeth. Your teeth are more or less standard marines, but cost you quite a lot in reinforcement, which I do not understand really. And the big problem with them is that they start with standard bolters, nothing special. 
but uh, only get access to their heavy weapons in tier 2. So there's no real reason to get teeth in tier 1. Uh, get them in tier 2 for the auto cannons, heavy bolters, or active plasma cannon, which is limited to one, which is a plasma cannon and also needs a relic. Leader wise, they get the same leaders as the Cornate Marines, which uh, also enables them the, uh, to had, have the same abilities. Interestingly enough, the uh, attack ground ability is here, I think. Um, okay, they cannot be sacrificed. I see, I see. <coughs> then you have the Cornate Raptors. The Raptors are, yeah, like the Raptors you would think of, can uh, jump around, are fast on their feet, can get. Um, other leaders, so they cannot get frag grenades, but they can get uh, crack grenades and melter bombs if you get the Raptor Champion Spine Champion. They cannot, cannot get an Icon Burr, but a Berserker or let's say a Raptor with Lightning Claws, which is just a unit that is really good at melee. They can sacrifice, they can get the Berserk Fury from the Raptor Champion some weapons. They can also get a jump, like a little Feral Leap ability from Run Research, which is true for or jump troops here we have we get to more jump troops later on they get also this feral leap in tier 2 or with gallon Solak, you get access to cornet berserkers the cornet berserkers uh, use random weapons um, are melee preferably can get uh, four leaders they can get a uh, berserker with lightning claws they can aspire and champion i can borrow and skull champion all of which we know already and can get also like frag grenades, crack grenades from their aspiring champion and melter bombs from their skull champion and can use the sacrifice ability. The skull champion also enables the um, basic fury ability. I have chosen the wrong one here. Um, if you get Gallant Solok and you get unlucky, you have the broken berserker squad, which is basically the same in all all the abilities and stuff it's all the same as uh, corn berserkers the uh, reinforcement is a little cheaper and they are generally inferior in terms of um, per model effectiveness but remember the the uh, economy bonus they also give you plus 10 for income so they uh, in terms of increasing your income they are uh, better um, at least for requisition that is and if you're lucky with Garland Solak, like you get these Primaris Berserkers. These Primaris Berserkers uh, can get frag grenades, and if you get their Skull Champion uh, Melter Bombs, and can use the Berserk Fury with their Skull Champion, and are, other than that, just really good units themselves. Look at f 6,000 health on five models is really nice, and this is before upgrades are in effect. So this is your uh, Tier 2, and this is your Special Tier 1, if you're lucky units, or if you're unlucky units. Any Tier 3, um, yeah. I beg your pardon, but the shit drops the deck, you get access to so, so many units. Like you have these possessed uh, marines. These are special in the way that they count as marine and demon, so the cost of them increases even in, uh, for, for every marine and demon on the field. We, I will talk about later the demon increase is similar to the cost increase to the marines, but for marines the cost increase is in requisition, for demons the cost increase is in power. Yeah, they are mainly superiority unit. They can uh, really good um, attack people with their arms here and get also the Berserk Fury with their possessed champion here. Increase their income of power and requisition melee. Then you have the Cornate Havocs, um, tier 3 squad as well. Uh, some ranged weapon options, really a low model count, but very good for each model. Can get a Havoc champion, which increase, uh, gives them the access to the Berserk Fury ability. You have access also to warp talents, which are your raptors, um, tier 3, you could say. Um, they have also the fairy leap ability, they can uh, get a warp talent champion um, just as a good model and they can teleport in instead of jump, so they are really fast on their feet as well, can get even faster with some upgrades. And then we have the four flavors of chosen, you need to choose one of these four chosen. You have the range chosen, you have your melee chosen, you have your destroyer chosen and you have a sword chosen they all get more or less the same uh, stuff you get like uh, a icon bearer or a chosen champion they can get frag grenades i think uh, standard like on the squad and then you get crack grenades if you have a chosen champion various uh, weapon options these are your chosen berserkers so they're more or less melee they get uh, interestingly enough Give me a second. The, the chaos champ, the chosen champion here gives a crack grenade, and here the chosen champion gives a melter bomb. It seems interesting. Um, then we have the chosen destroyer squad, which gives also crack grenade from uh, the chosen champion, and has these um, 
ranged uh, options including a missile launcher which is interesting and then you have the coordinate assault chosen which are your uh, raptor chosen you could think they can jump they get get a melter bomb from their leader and also the berserk fury ability also available in tier 3 are your terminators your melee terminators are called red butchers but are like melee terminators get the berserk fury uh, ability from your terminator champion note that they cannot teleport they need to walk to the enemy can get uh, an assortment of melee weaponry your ranged terminators similar get also a terminator champion for the uh, um, berserk fury ability and um, yeah various ranged options very special uh, units you have access if you fight um, uh, 13th company you get these blood wolves which is um, you get from the uh, portal of champions they um, yeah um, you could think about them at berserkers but better kind of they get uh, frag grenades and have this missile storm ability which is interesting and uh, it's uh, ability the wolf leader pack leader gives them this basically he uses his rocket packs at the back uh, various different um, abilities around him uh, uh, special weapons you could um, get for them and lastly the uh, bloodied which uh, you get access to if you fight uh, with or against uh, world eaters they are also like berserk like units you get like two melee units and you get this special skull champion which has this big old axe here so also melee um, orientated get frequenates and have this blood frenzy um, take more damage and take less damage which is okay loses control and morale you, you, you have control loss if you have uh, no morale so interestingly enough this, this blood frenzy uh, it gives you just that um, that you have no morale so they lose control interesting let's say that it's interesting um, the blood frenzy normally from your squads um, with a crew improved squads resistance to attacks that damage morale squad does more damage but also takes more damage so this is a two um, sided thought and this is, is, um, gives you more damage and lets you take less damage but you lose control so it's uh, not the same ability Whew. this is your infantry let's talk about demons demons is also available in tier 1 and demon units like the, these four at least here have uh, one thing in common with the uh, um, marines that they increase the cost of each demon subsequent demons and it's for these it's plus one power per model you could say per model per model as i said earlier so like um, if a squad starts with four models the cost increases per model on the field for four because they have four models and the first one you have access to are the flesh hounds these are interesting they can um, are really fast they can detect and are most uh, or best used against vehicles or buildings uh, funnily enough um, can tie up of course tier one infantry um, as well other tier one units you have are your blood letters they are more for infantry um, killing but very bad against buildings and vehicles they get a little jump a little teleport if you uh, upgrade the second blood letter upgrade there are two upgrades special to blood letters the first one increases the general fighting ability and gives you access to the blood hunter which is the uh, leader looks more or less the same like all the others so <laughs> but yeah does more damage i suppose and the second upgrade also increases the fighting capabilities and gives them a little teleport ability um, if you have the special cornate lord here the demonic lord of corn uh, remember me that i need to research it you, so you can see the jump now here um, you have these favorite blood letters which are like blood letters on steroids really strong um, i think you can get more than one favorite blood letter can you yes you can build even more but it yeah of course more of course and they can jump as well i've researched and lastly in tier 2 you get access to the blood crusher the blood crusher i tell you what is really awesome um, you can deep strike him uh, it is by itself only good against buildings but has a lot of hp and can tie down uh, range squads in a matter that it just can tank a lot and why can it tank a lot because of the special armor type it's not demon medium it's demon high and that's why the 1.5k uh, is more than it seems and most importantly the demon upgrades if you get one have now 750 more and you get the second upgrade in tier 3 look at him go 3000 over 3000 hp so 3000 hp of demon 
high is quite a lot. So it is very, very durable. The other demons you have access to is your Bloodthirster, which is your Relic Unit. Um, do I want to talk about Relic Units yet? Um, yeah, why not? Relic Units. There are different Relic Units. These Relic Commanders also count as Relic Units. It's, it's, it is in their unit description. They are in a sense similar that they increase the cost of subsequent relic units as well but it's by a higher degree so normally you would think a faction should only have access to one relic unit for world eaters if you have enough resources you can get every relic unit wa uh, once of course not twice it was you could get relic units of every kind as much as you want in 5.9.1 but here it's like you can different relic units all of them but only one each but the cost increases quite a lot. Like a relic unit costs, I think, 400 and 400 uh, requisition, 400 power. If you have a relic unit already on the field, this increases by 250 for power and um, requisition. So having more relic units on the field gets very, very expensive really fast. So the Bloodthirster is one of the relic units. The relic units um, for demon, you could say, increases um, income for both um, requisition and power. And yeah, he slowly loses health when not in combat, which is not true. I think he uh, has increased regeneration when in combat. Uh, other than that, he can jump and is your more or less standard bloodthirster. You have your demon prince, which is considered a commander, I think. Um, I'm not sure why he has not uh, aura here. I think he has. He has a breath ability and can jump. Um, detects infiltrated units. And you have big boy Ankron here. Look at him go. He is like the big bad boy, the demon primer, has this big thought, deals a lot of damage, can jump around and is um, yeah, basically just a big bad boy. Um, yeah, immensely powerful warrior. So if you see Ankron, um, yeah, run for your life. <laughs> so these are the demon um, units available. Let's talk about vehicles and titan vehicles as well. Your non-titan vehicles, you have the Studio Transport, which is a transport um, uh, you may, may or may not know from the Imperial Guard, it can only transport transport cultists, but has a nice aura with this icon you can research here. Increases the regeneration rate of nearby infantry, so really good support um, vehicle. It also has like smoke launchers you can research, so it's a really good support vehicles which can get a heavy flamer or auto cannon. Auto cannons is used for the most time part, I think. Available in tier 2 is also the two Dreadnought variants you have. You have a Hellfire Dreadnought and a Berserker Dreadnought, like your ranged and melee Dreadnought. Your ranged Dreadnought can use his uh, Trinning Heavy Bolt here, but can also use Missile Launchers if upgraded. Um, and then you have tier 3 options. You have the Hellforge Dreadnought, which is built from your Bloodsmith. Uh, it's a tier 3, really um, cool looking, I have to say, Dreadnought, um, which can use Machine Rage, the armor class changes to Demon, okay, and increases damage dealt, interesting ability. <coughs> Most of the upcoming uh, melee um, vehicles can use this. Hellforge Shred mod is one of it. Then you have the Blood Slaughterer, which detects enemy infantry in, in its melee, um, more or less melee, only has like this uh, heavy bolters, and what is this? Flamers? <coughs> Sorry, I need to drink something, my voice. Mm. Yeah, Flamer, so can use in range, but better used in melee. Can use um, Machine Rage. And if you chose the Demon Specialization and got an upgrade, you can upgrade your Blood Thorter to the Blood Terror, which is basically the same unit, but stronger. More damage, uh, more health, and also the Machine Rage ability. And then in tier 3 you have also access to the Possessed Tank, which is a tank but melee. You see here it has ranged options, but it has also really good melee options. Can use also Machine Rage to increase the damage uh, dealt from this unit. I think also in range. Uh, how big is the range, however? It's, uh, it's okay, actually. The two units you see here are Relic um, units. You have the Sikoran Battle Tank, which is uh, more or less a... No, it's, a, it's not a Bane Blade, it's not a Land Raider, it's like this um, special tank that, um, like, for example, uh, Imperial Fists and Salamanders have access to, so this is like this um, unit type, you could think. Um, 
has a lot of guns, can use demonic obsession to increase the damage dealt. And is it slow or no? It's like standard, I think. The, the speed does not decrease. No, the speed is the same. It does uh, has a damage boost, temporal, and can use smoke launchers. And then you have this beauty, the Doom Blaster, which is a ranged an artillery unit. Um, what I noticed about this unit is that the big range it shows here, like the range here, is not automatically used um, if something comes in range. You more or less need to manually use the attack ground ability to get all of his effectiveness. Um, just a little heads up for that. And then you have the uh, all these four are tier one titans. All have melee um, yeah, possibilities. Some have range as well. You have the Lord of Skulls. Um, just a big good unit. It does not state any special abilities. Um, then you have like two knights: your ranged knight and your melee knight. The melee knight can get, however, a rocket launch on top and also like an uh, auto cannon. And uh, ranged Terminator, uh, Terminator Knight has access to more weapons, and they have both the Ion Shield ability, which um, reduces damage taken uh, from ranged attacks, do not protect against melee attacks, however. And then you have a Kitan Demon Engine of Corn, has very good health regeneration in state, so very good at uh, sustained prolonged melee fights. And then you have this Bane. Played Titan, Bane Lord Titan here, a tier 2 Titan, really big, has big missiles, has a um, chain gun in the mouth, has flamers, has basically everything in the book. Also has the iron shield ability similar to these tanks here to reduce range damage taken. Um, do not has a melee attack, so um, getting this unit uh, to uh, fight in melee is uh, what it is not meant for. You could say uh, if you, pro for example, stun it with a stun ability and then teleport in your terminators, for example, with Thunderhammers that also can stun uh, units, yeah, it becomes quite the, uh, yeah, how should I say, quite a sitting duck. And I also see it also has the commander aura because it's more or less considered a commander, or was considered, so it also has this commander aura increase. And lastly, we have the Helldrake as a flyer. Um, flying a unit um, has like really good um, eco value if you just look at all the black smoke it <laughs> emits here. Uh, I'm, I'm really a uh, sucker for hellblades, I like them. He has like auto cannons and also flamer from the mouth and can use also the machine rage here to deal more damage and stuff. So really nice unit, I like it. Okay, Whew. I think this is all the units. Um, let me quickly go over my notes here. Yeah, this is this is basically it. Um, so you can get li quite a lot of units, but um, the more units you get, especially relic units, the more expensive it gets. So you want to choose wisely um, or save up so you can click um, two Titan units at the same time or um, relic units. But that's mostly a bad decision because you want to uh, spend your resources very uh, well. Okay, with these units out of the way um, and buildings and whatnot, we will now jump over to the tech trees. See you in a second. And here we are on the tech tree document. I have a little color coding here as usual. If a unit is exclusive to technomancy, it is uh, has a blue outline. If it's exclusive to, exclusive to demonology, it has a red outline. So you see it at the beginning here. Um, as usual, I want to talk mostly about the upgrades you can get. For example, in your barracks, you can get all the grenade upgrades in tier one, so you can start getting the crack grenades when transitioning in tier two, for example. So your aspiring champions immediately have this ability. Um, your upgrades for your blood letters start in tier one directly, and then you need to have tier two for the second upgrade. You get access to uh, blood crushers with this upgrade um, in tier two. Um, this is also grants you access to uh, terminators. Terminators need this upgrade, so you need to have a demon gate and a barracks to get terminators so you know. Um, similarly, some of the uh, vehicles here need a um, demon building as well. So because they are like demon engines, so you need to have some demon gates to uh, um, get them. You could say here's the upgrade for your blood slaughterers, uh, getting them to blood terrors. Mm, yeah, then your relic and uh, 
Titan units here you, for the Titan tiers you have upgrades. Um, this is your tier 1 Titan upgrade and your tier 2 Titan upgrade, so you have access to these units. Titans need a relic and a uh, critical location. And now about the different upgrades. This is the leap ability for all your raptors, warp, um, what are they called? Not warp spiders, warp talents and assault uh, chosen. Then you have a general movement speed increase for all your marines, which is mostly important for melee squads, of course. This is a blood smell, blood smell ability, which gives all your uh, different marine squads detection, which is probably I have uh, missed for a few squads here, which I need to add. And then this is a special upgrades, um, the Hellblades. Hellblades uh, only available if you have Demonology, it gives your commanders or like your aspiring champions uh, the Hellblades as a melee unit. And then you have your more or less standard upgrades. You have Bionics for more health. You have the Commander upgrades, which I told you earlier also increases the Commander cap. Your Demon upgrade, your melee for your melee damage upgrade for Marines, your range damage upgrade for Marines, a special weapon upgrade, mostly for Marines. I don't know if it's uh, available or increases the damage and available um, weapons for cultists. I'm not really sure about it. And then you have your first rec uh, income upgrade and your second income upgrade and a second tier for most of the other upgrades here. Um, yes. Have, I have here the global abilities as well. And this is mostly it for this. Before before we jump into the units, we will talk about tier strength. So World Eaters are strong in tier one with the uh, commanders. They have really strong commanders and the economy you can get out of them. Uh, the current Marines are really good Marines as, as more or less usual. You can get the grenades and whatnot. Uh, the demon opener can be very strong or very weak depending on the, the matchup so um, it's it's also not as easily executed as using ranged marines but can work and then in tier 2 comes the versatility so if, for example if you um, started off with demons in tier 2 you can add the barracks and then get some teeth out with heavy weapons as support because you have the requisition um, how should I say, to spare, because you have a lot of demons built already, so you have not a lot of power. You can then use the requisition to support them with ranged marines, for example. But you also can get uh, vehicles out. If you, like, for example, started off with marines, you can get either vehicles or you can get a demon gate and get some um, blood crushers out, for example, as melee support. So it's uh, very versatile, especially um, that your tier 2 um, vehicles are good and sometimes even cheap, like the Testudo is really cheap and effective for what it does. Um, tier 2 is also really good and it, they, they get stronger in the higher tiers. Like tier 3 is really good because you, the second tier of the upgrades are really good. But look here what, what you have access to in terms of infantry. Most of the infantry is available in tier 3. So uh, your really good infantry in terms of chosen, possessed, uh, warp, talents or devastators and the terminators is all available in tier 3. Tier 3 also enables you these um, no, these um, units here like the possessed tank and the possessed uh, the hell drake because they need this uh, great gate so these are your tier 2 um, a tier 3 tanks you could say tier 2 is the blood terror which needs a demon gate um, so you get a lot of stuff in tier 3 and you get also a lot of stuff in tier 4 and onward in terms of this relic commanders and relic units so if the game gets very long with a lot of resources you can like field a lot of relic units as well so the longer the game goes and you have an intact economy some of some sort you can get even stronger so the longer the game goes the stronger you are you could say um, the problem with that is that you want to constantly fight to get economy um, up so you will um, more or less not reach the, the last tiers for most for the most part you, because you cannot you cannot just uh, turtle up and say I only fight when I'm tier three for example because uh, all the other factions will get more economy <laughs> that's that's how it is if the enemy gets more economy it can tech fast it can build more units and yeah you lose so you want to be aggressive uh, um, at least uh, a bit you you can um, always choose to not overcommit. Um, and only attack with a commander and a few units and get to get some eco so you can tech up and stuff. So this is um, a little 
yeah, special. A special is also that you need to be, let's say, uh, able to adapt because of the melee economy bonus. It's not always planable what resources you will have and, and in what proportion. So if you see that you have a lot of requisition, you need to have uh, in mind, okay, I need this unit. I have a lot of requisition. Uh, I need, let's say, anti-vehicle and I have a lot of requisition. So I think I will get some teeth because these cost mainly requisition. Or if I have a lot of power um, and I need a special unit, do I go for uh, more vehicles or do I go for demons maybe? So you you normally you can really plan out your economy. Like I want to get a lot of vehicles. So I build a lot of generators, get the power upgrades and let's go. For, for world eaters, you need to uh, be more like on the flow, decisions on the flow. This is nice in a way, but also not nice in another way. So you need to like it, I, I say. And I'm, I myself, I'm not really sure if I like it or not. It's, uh, I, I like it uh, a few times, but playing only uh, world eaters will probably not be a, a thing I will do. But yeah, I, it's, it's cool in a sense. So it's very different to other factions. Okay, let's jump over to the units here. And there's one thing I will quickly see if I forgot it. It's like the blood smell ability here, um, which gives your um, Marines detection. And I think I forgot to put it for the new Marines, like for these, yeah. You see, I need to put it here and here. So you see the, the um, tech tree on my drive will have it already, so. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what I need to talk about it here because I have uh, talked about it quite a lot. I have, um, there's something double, right? This is uh, wrong. This I need to change as well. <laughs> Sorry about that. I will change this in the drive as well. So um, I have all the abilities here. I have uh, for every unit, uh, also if it has melee or and, um, if it has melee economy for um, acquisition and power this is sometimes misleading so you get also a little power for marines but not a lot but I have chosen to put it um, there I also have here notice if it's a space marine so you know um, if it counts to the uh, cost increase this is also true for demons and also relic units you see here relic units have this uh, marking and also demon units demon units come at the end yeah you see here demon it's all um, um, you can see it here if it's like relic or demon unit, so you know it increases the cost of this and that. The bonus units for survival are melee cultists for some reason, a special Havoc Sword, which is very diff different to your uh, Havoc you have access here. I think this is because it's like the 5.9 Havoc version. A melee dreadnought for some sorts, for some reason, a possessed tank and a Doom Blaster. Interestingly enough, the Doom Blaster also counts as a relic unit. So if you get the relic Doom Blaster reinforcement, it also increases the cost of your relic units you want to build. Um, one special thing also is the requirements of the squad leaders is sometimes that you need the add-ons for the squad um, leaders as well. Not only tier two, as it says, you need also the uh, add-ons. And here you see the commander upgrade, which gives you the commander uh, auras I told you about. Most weapons require tier two, only tier two. You see here, the special weapons for most squads is tier two. Some of them are available right away. And for your commander, like your um, Cornite Lord or Terminator Cornite Lord, there are some stuff available in tier two, but most of them are available in uh, tier three. You see here, like the big bunch and some even tier four later on. So really late the uh, commander upgrades for the Cornite Lord. So he may or may not a good um, unit to choose in tier four, but in tier four, you will have also access to your relic commanders, um, but they cost a lot. So maybe the, the Cornet Lord is a good choice in tier three and tier four in, in the end. Haven't played a lot of World Eaters in PVP myself. Haven't played um, a lot of long games either. So you will see, um, yeah, you can understand that I'm not really sure how how a tier four World Eater, what, what a tier four World Eater wants to build or want does not want to build. Okay, okay. with all these uh, talk about the tech trees, we will now jump over to the build orders. And as you have access to a hell of a lot of different um, commanders in tier one, you can see here, and there's bound to be a hell of a lot of different build orders. I have actually 10 
build orders for you. So, whew, another thing to uh, talk uh, quite long about. So see you, see you in a second. And here we are on the build order document. Your standard build order would include um, two capo units. I would recommend ranged uh, troopers because they can get uh, long ranged weaponry in tier two to support your main fights. Uh, the melees. You could also use melee cultists to like throw into melee for some minor economy boosts and some blood points. Cheap blood points, also a valid choice, but I mostly like the ranged troopers. Then get a coronate lord or a dark apostle. Most of the time, the dark apostle would be the better choice. Two coronate marines, no generator start because you need a lot of requisition to get your marines up first. Um, I also recommend you get a third marine out at some point. Um, before reinforcing these two, uh, especially because, you know, having more models on the field, Space Marines increases the cost of this um, squad. And then if you have to build your um, generator, which you do not want to wait uh, too long because the um, power bonus, uh, power income bonus is a multiplier. And if you zero, if you have zero, uh, it multiplies by zero and it's still zero. So if you want to have at least some income, and that you will use to get also grenades for your marines. And I also recommend to get a cultist command squad for the sacrifice ability in tier one. So you have to, your sacrifice abilities to keep your cornet marines fighting a, even longer, which gives you quite a lot of um, um, fighting power, you could say. Um, you could go re melee or ranged, uh, depending on what you need from the command squad. You will need up to three, uh, about three generators before you can get tech to tier two. Um, then I open up with the uh, um, Galang Surlak guy, which is similar, but not the same. You get him, you get two um, Cornate Marines and yeah, later a Demon Host for building stuff, uh, tier two basically. Um, uh, later on, you can use your, why I get this to so late is because your main builder can teleport. So you um, can get a lot of building done with only one builder. And uh, at some point you want to have a second builder, but it costs 100 requisition, which is better used to get a fighting unit. Um, you will need a generator at some point, And I think you would also need a generator to get the first code of Berserkers out, but I'm not really sure about it 100%, but this is the composition you will have. If you want to have more Berserkers or more Marines, you would need to have a pop cap uh, research, which is quite expensive. Um, so uh, this is a good fighting force by itself. You can attach Galang Zerg to your Berserkers to give them even more regeneration, I think. So they have a good melee squad with uh, some ranged support, which is really nice. Similar to the build before, you need about, about, it's depending on the game, of course. If you reinforce more, you can sometimes get away with uh, two generators because you spend a lot of requisition reinforcing. So yeah, you will not have to requisition to tech up, but yeah, about three generators to tech up to tier two. Then you have the cultist spam, which to be honest, this is the one build order here that does not really work anymore. It's because of the very low um, income bonus from cultists. So it's not very uh, sustainable. But yeah, if you want to go, you get one generator to have at least some power income, get a lot of cultists, get the cultist command squad after your first two, and then wait, not queue them up, queue them uh, only up if um, this guy is on the field. Because when it's on the field, these guys get cheaper. Then you want to get two demon hosts. Why you want to get all your demon hosts, which they are limited to three. You start with one and then you get two. You can um, jump them, like deep strike them in and attach them to your melee cultists. So these take less damage and also can use this blood, whatever ability on them to deal some extra damage. So this is why um, I say uh, get some demon host support as well in the fight. Later on, you want to build one of the production buildings so you can then uh, tech to tier two. As you started with one generator, you normally have quite a lot of power already, um, basically floating power as well. Um, this is why this is mostly not a good build. Then you have a demon opener. And um, I learned that if you go for demons, you have still uh, quite a lot of requisition to spare at times. So I uh, like to um, combine my demons with cultists because they cost requisition and can some sort um, help in some sort to get a, a ranged support for your demons, which are all melee. You start off with a generator, build a demon gate, and then build two more generators. So you have enough power to get a blood letter and a demon hound, a flesh hound. 
um, you could save and get for two blood letters, but this gives you two melee squads um, really early, which allows you to tie up two enemy squads. Um, as I said, I get cultists, so I get also the cultist command squad for some ranged support. So you see here, I do not recommend the melee cultists here, only the ranged cultists, so I have ranged support. You can or should get later on a second blood letter squad, but also get the blood letter upgrade as soon as you can and then get the blood hunter this is the blood hunter i mean it has the same icon but this is like the leader for them and as these cost a lot of power you want to have like all your six generators before you have nearly enough power to tech up all the requisition you spend in uh, cultists or generators so you can tech up later on and the first thing you want to have normally in tier 2 i would recommend like the economy upgrade for this build the first thing you want to have in tier 2 is the second uh, blood letter upgrade and the demon upgrade from your uh, armory so your demons you have already on the field gets uh, stay a lot more sustainable one thing you can also do which i have not here because I, it's like on the way to tier 2 if you have spare resources is the uh, the one herald of corn you could say um, a blood letter dude um, which is really good commander to attach one of your to attach to one of your um Blood letters because he has also the uh, aura around him decreasing range to attack. So he's quite expensive. I think it's like 340 requisition, 150 power. So nothing you want to open really with. I, I'm not sure if it's like this guy or the other guy that's so expensive, but can be good to have him um, later, you could say. Then you can also have like demons and marines. This um, works in a sense that you do not build a demon gate, but you get like. Um, this guy here, this really expensive guy, I think this is the guy, he costs like 340 requisition, 150 power, so you, this, these generators are mainly <laughs> to get this guy on the field, you could say, and then, um, so you have only some cultists and this guy in the in the first few minutes, but then you can get these favorite blood letters and two marine squads, so you have melee and range support, attach this guy to his squads, and later on, I think you have some um, requisition to spare so you can get a dark apostle which can double down in your melee and um, I think these blood letters also really like his uh, one ability which gives them more speed and range damage reduction so this is quite a good synergy in a sense and then you have two commanders for very good income as well uh, yeah you need a little more generators than the usual because you have these blood letters but not the full six because you only have one squad uh, here then you can tech up Raptor opener you have here as well. Um, you also note here that I get no generator, although these costs power, I think, also power to reinforce. So you will at some point need some uh, generators. Also this add-on costs power as well. So this is a very tight build order where you cannot afford any commander in the beginning uh, without getting a generator out. But then later um, you want a Dark Apostle or your Cornite Lord, a more or less uh, standard, you could say. Um, yeah, and then three generators to get to tier three, also pretty standard. Um, yeah, your cultists as range support if needed. And then you have like the tech marines plus turret thingy where you go the first build order where you get technomancy. Um, this it's very special in the sense that you want to get a demon host before technomancy because uh, that's something I did not talk in the safe game. But if you get the demon host first, it's in your HU and can be deep striked. If you get Technomancy first and then build a Technomancer, it spawns outside of your HQ. So you can use this little trick to uh, deep strike a demon host, which will then, when it deep strike uh, is being deep strike, turn into a Technomancer. So you have a little um, mobility advantage. Um, in this build, you particularly want to have melee cultists because uh, you get ranged marines with um, support from your Technomancer. So these kind of work as your sponges. Um, in the beginning and yeah you want to have all your technomancers up uh, one this one turns into the technomancer and this one as well you only have a limit of three which is a little sad you want to build a turret and that's why you cannot get a commander right away because you want to have, have a turret um, and you want to attach one or two technomancers to your cornet marines if needed three but then you have no builder units left because they give this passive uh, damage bonus to your marines as well as giving um, this ability you can activate, which even increases damage of your squad even more. Um, you want to get some generators then and get one of these, uh, or should I say, 
commanders out here. This is a build order where you can also get at later on Garland Sulak and maybe get a Berserker out or something. So this is why I have him here. You can also get the special uh, warp smith guy here or your apost dark apostle, which is never a bad choice. Yeah, more or less the usual three generators before you tick um, tier two. And this one is probably the one of the more I, I don't want to say it, but the more overpowered build orders. It got nerfed a hell of a lot. I I um, made quite a lot of suggestion to make it weaker. It is a lot of it is really weaker than before because this was one of the most overpowered build orders in 5.9. It is way better now, um, but it's still very strong. The the idea is you want to get uh, as you see here a second builder and then the the technomancy ability is similar to the reason here. So you can deep strike the um, demon host and then turn into a technomancer. You want to get ranged cultists because why not? You start with a generator and then a barracks or a demon gate here. You need a barracks or demon gate to produce servitors. So you get then your um, warpsmiths and immediately start to spam Range servitors, the range servitors are limited to four. You want to get all four and give them heavy bolters here. Uh, get some generators if needed for all the upgrades. And then you want to build some melee servitors. The melee servitors aren't really good against infantry or yeah, infantry or commanders. This is where your ranged uh, servitors want to come in and deal with them. These are really good at killing buildings and repairing your servitors. Um, your blood warpsmith also has an ability which I didn't talk in the safe game uh, where he can repair units in an area of effect around him. So these are all mechanical units. I think the servitors they can be repaired. So you can uh, pump up the regeneration of the servitors. Yeah, and then you want to attack at some point. But this is a build order that is really strong in tier 1. You can win a lot of games with just this build order. Then you have your more or less standard tier 2 rush you get a um a generator one of the production buildings and another generator and then you build tier 2 get uh, your builders early because you want to build these buildings and of course your listing posts as well your icons of corn so you need a lot of builders right away and last but not least you have this commander echo boom you could say so so uh, a double commander where you um one of the few uh, build orders where you get marines and a generator because you want to um, get a second leader more or less uh, really fast. You can um, use your power. You have a little, uh, how should I say this? You need some power to get uh, your second um, commander on the field. I think it would be good. So you get can get also grenades because you have a lot of power then in any way. And then later on you um, put in two marines. You want to have a generator because your commander bonuses, as I said, for power only apply if you have power income in the first place. And then you have like two commanders that go into melee. This is um, why I chose those, those two as well. Um, this one has the uh, ability that reduces range damage taken. And this has a passive uh, regeneration aura. So you have like, if they are together, they regenerate quite a lot of and don't take a lot of damage. And then you want to get uh, marines out nevertheless to... Uh, uh, yeah, help you fighting and then yeah, you get tier 2 out really fast because you have quite a lot of economy. So it's not as fast as a tier 2 rush, but you have at least an army to fight with. Okay, so all these are tested against the AI. Some of them I tested in PvP as well, so they should be valid. Um, of course, you can tell me um, if you have another build order that's really cool or you have something to tell me about these build orders. and. We close this guide as usual with a uh, replay. It is a replay not from me, but uh, what is it called? Corn Berserk, or, um, I think it's called. Corn Berserk or Berserk Corn. He only plays World Eaters. Um, is he the best player in Unification? Probably not. Um, but I wanted to show not me playing again. And it's nice to have uh, a guy dedicated to World Eaters, which is uh, I really admire. <laughs> So uh, don't um, rage if I um, call out a lot of mistakes because it's when I see it, I call it out and this is uh, a guide video in the end. So you want to also know what not to do. So I give a lot of advices in that sense. Okay, so see you in the safe game. 
And here we are in the replay where we see Yasu playing as Necrons versus uh, the Corn Berserk as Corn. Of course, I casted this game uh, as well, and I know that Corn Berserk didn't like this game very much. But yeah, we can maybe show something he did wrong or could done have done better here. Um, I wanted originally to go for another game, which I also casted as the Legion against Corn. Um, by Corn Berserk as well, but uh, this re uh, replay, um, as I re reviewed it, I saw that he missed a corner at Marine Squad for like 10 minutes in his base, so I didn't want to show and um, pick on him for this. Um, but yeah, more or less a standard opener. He likes to go for Demonology uh, right at the get-go because he likes to get Hellblades in here too, I think. Um, he goes for one corner at Marine right away. He gets uh, the Dark Apostle no Generator, which is good. Um, Caps the stuff, but he gets a demon host really early, so he see he has no resources to get a second um, corner squad right away. I normally like to use my corner squad to cap this point, so he's a little slow on the capping part, but is a little uh, early in the aggressive part. So I normally like to get your first squad um, cap this, get your cultists right away at this point, in this point. Um, but yeah, that's preference. So he has his corner marines uh, out very early. These in the second Cornet Marines become more expensive now, so he needs to like 2 or 4, I think, for them. Um, but what he does, he moves them out, and I think he reinforces them at least once, which is something I highly dis. Uh, or should I say? Highly encourage not to do. Um, as I said earlier, yeah, you see here, reinforces them once, so your next squad will become even more expensive. Um, it, you say might say it's only four requisition, but it adds up really quickly. So you want to get your second Cornite Marines earlier. He plays against Necrons, so he can get really aggressive early on because Necrons is, for the most part, uh, in their base. So he uses these uh, Cornite Marines and tries even some melee, I think, for some economy boost, which is nice. Um, I'm not sure if you get economy boost from workers, though. I'm not 100% sure. But here you see the Dark Apostle with the two uh, Dark Disciples already. Um, mistake here, he needs to get the Cornite Marines out he wants to fight with right now and rally them to the front. So this is something uh, a lot of players tend to forget. They are like, yeah, I want to fight and then don't use the resources really well. So he could have started the second Cornite Marine squad already. But you see here now, if this Dark Apostle, okay, it does not uh, work on builders, which is good, I would say. Use this Cornite Marines in melee. These guys are really good in melee better than your standard marines in melee, which are already really good. And here are some uh, Necron Warriors. So the, here comes the ability, which in gets uh, increases the speed and reduces the range damage taken, which is really nice. But now, sadly, the Obelisk is finished already and boom! And here you can see that uh, an earlier marine would be able to intercept the Spiller Scarabs, but would also be needed at the front a second or even a third squad of marines. So you see here this cost 214 because he reinforced them to the max it would be 204 if he wouldn't. Um, yeah, it adds up at some point I'd say. Really good um, trying to focus down the, the boss turret here. Builder Scarabs will come uh, out here and you can see that the lack of a second marine squad is hurting him here in this fight. There's the, the Cornet Lord and we see the resources skyrocketing as the marines and uh, um, Dark Apostle go into melee. Now I think if you have had more Coinet Marines uh, at the front fighting, how much you could have done. I, and it, it's, I say what, it's quite a lot. Um, this is a mistake in that sense, but okay. And yeah, then you need more generators now. Um, yeah, plasma generators on the way, so he goes more, I think, than tier 2 with two generators because he reinforced quite a lot. He forced some fights here. And yeah, has now one, two, three Cornet Marine squads on the way, which is the magical number, I'd say, in tier one. You can get a third one, I think, but you also want to keep some unit cap available for some tier two units. And yes, I think as soon as this is finished, he, he um, should go tier two. Poof. Tier two um, resources are available now, but he, uh, yeah, little misplay as well. He reinforces his Marines. And yeah, misses an opportunity for a fast tier 2. Is he now building it? No, I think he is busy fighting again. So yeah, standard mistakes a lot of people do. No, really good. He, he, he starts tier 2 in a good pace. He's now fighting here using his abilities as well, using his uh, Dark Apostle melee, which uh, is increasing his economy quite a bit. 
and now it um, tries to force a fight here and yeah one thing he also forgets sadly uh, is to um, now upgrade uh, grenades and he uses sacrifice on these squads which I also said you should not you should rather get a cultist command squad which he could also afford by now he has a lot of requisition to spend um, spend a lot of requisition to um, reinforce but he could have also got a cultist command squad here and used the sacrifice ability with the cultist command squad and have also another squad to fight in melee or range depending on the unit he chose so um, this is something that um, I have in the standard build order um, we talked a bit about this game uh, um, and uh, the strategy used in the Discord and <laughs> he, he ha hated this game because yeah, Necrons are not fun to play against for most people, me included, so that's why he was a little uh, ragey about it. Um, a general tactic, if you look at the Fog of War, he continues to attack in this defended position and allows the Necrons to get these two points. Um, at some point you need to change your attack angle and attack from here so you have only one um, turret to care about and yeah can kill up to three obelisks you might say obelisks do not give you resources yes and no they give you speed for the necrons and also unit cap increases so if the um, enemy only has two obelisks they have fight on very low caps especially in tier two onward with um, the vehicles you have very low vehicles he is tier 2 now, got the speed upgrade, gets the bionics and demon shells. As I said earlier, I would love to see a generator more and then get the economy upgrade, which is really much, pretty much needed because you cannot upgrade the listing post. You will be stuck on this low economy if you're not in melee for quite a long and the economy upgrades are really good for what they cost. It's only 200, 200 and gives you 25% uh, increase in everything. Little misplay here also to get his full army back and not have nothing at the front to defend. But yeah, in the end you do not want to split your army against Necrons also, which so it's maybe also uh, a good decision in the end. He now gets probably, hopefully, the aspiring champions. Needs grenades. Um, I don't know, sure if he has grenades now. Um, you also want some crack grenades, so you could, in theory, if you have your aspiring champions and crack grenades, like bypass the enemy. Um, defenses and then throw some crack grenades at the generators for example it's something that can work um, what would in general also work would be a more melee focused build if you go like the Galen Solak opener where you get um, melee berserkers um, or as I said the uh, command squad as well with um, some melee troopers could help you uh, close the gap as well so now we see another attack he now has the uh, um, champions gets another um, generator now and yeah get should get another generator and get the economy upgrade but yeah is busy fighting um, that's no big deal other than that he needs to decide what to go in tier 2 what I like to do or what I can recommend is if you um, build a lot of generators anyway you can get a demon gate get the brazen onslaught and get a um, blood crusher out to just right click to the Necron warrior squad and yeah he, he can uh, never really f uh, shoot with those because he's very tanky and can keep up with the slow movement speed um, the thing here you yeah, have another sacrifice used on uh, uh, marines not really good uh, all things considered so some sort of melee hero uh, to uh, combine with the dark disciple dark apostle would be nice here finally he has grenades a little late on that um, grenades would have been nice earlier would also need to immediately um, queue up the second grenade so he has an answer to uh, um, vehicles but also uh, buildings. Commander upgrade here is really nice and needed for the Dark Apostle. As I said, a second or third commander now would be also nice. Has a lot of resources for that as well. Gets now the Dark Mechanicum. Um, and yeah, with this resource distribution, um, some. Testudos would be nice. Yeah, now has also the part pack troopers. I think the, and I hope the sacrifice ability was used by these blood pack troopers because the um, death brigade veteran gives him access to. Now we have a really big problem for <laughs> world eaters. It's wraith because wraith are really hard to kill in range um, combat, and you need some melee units to fight against. Maybe 
a thing that would really work against them well would be a raptor squad. You can get the storm chambers and get one raptor squad, which just follows the wraith uh, left and right. Get some extra resources as well uh, while in melee, so this could could work uh, quite well. He's now has the blood mechanicum and now needs to spam um, some testudos. I think he could also get a uh, dreadnought out for the n for now. He does not get e either. As I said earlier, you can also or should also get the economy upgrade as well. Um, what does he go for? Another Cornet Marine Squad. This is a mistake. You are on tier 2. You do not want any more Cornet Marines. He goes for Testudos. Uh, I would cancel that and spam Testudos like there's no tomorrow with assault cannons and yeah. I think we we'll stick into for this last fight and yeah, if you have seen my cast, you know that in after this fight um, uh, the game is over, so we'll stick in here for for a second to see how he uses. Yeah, he uses the sacrifice ability on the blood pack troopers, which is nice, and now has uh, quite a lot of cornate marines to fight with. Um, Meltos is the right choice, I think, because you have a lot of anti infantry already on their default guns. You have anti infantry in form of the uh, dark apostle as well, so you want to have something to fight against vehicles. So this is a good choice in my in my book. But yeah, you need some more support units not only uh, you want some testudos you want some um, demons maybe or uh, in tier 2 you can also get berserkers the berserker unit 2 would have helped quite a lot here as well so yeah um, with this um, <laughs> onslaught of uh, chaos marines versus necrons I will um, finish the guide here if I have forgot something as usual please tell me if I if you have some other nice um, little details you know about the world leaders please let me know if you have some um, can tell me that I said something wrong you can correct me uh, edit information I told you already you can tell me as well so yeah <laughs> yeah you get the, the, the up, um, damage aura from the commander upgrade so this is why you should prioritize it in tier 2 as well um, I think we we'll stick here for a bit um, because this is not the last fight last fight with one of the better fights here is this one because he has a little flanking going on has the, the studio with uh, auto cannon has cornet squads here and you see the hell plates got re uh, researched but now we have like hell plates on on range squad so um, this would be better on um, berserkers like the berserkers can also get the aspiring champion and berserkers aspiring champion in melee with a hell plate is really nice I suppose so yeah this would be a, a, a good option to um, get it. Also, another option would be now to get a melee dreadnought, for example. I think he goes tier three at some point, um, but he has a lot of power, so getting a melee dreadnought here would help him as well because he has a lot of ranged uh, power here and needs some melee. Not only before because of the resource, but also to work into the solar pulse, for example. So another big fight brewing here with this fight in the background as I said I will finish the guide here um, I, I have told you already that you can tell me what I missed or and so on and so forth so I think we will stick here a bit in this fight and as the usual guys thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye bye